Hi, I'm Joy Brighton, Columbia MBA and former Wall Street trader. The information presented here has been compiled by an international team of counterterrorism, national security, and Sharia law experts, as well as human rights activists, both Muslim and non-Muslim. Lately, we've been hearing about a fast-growing new market on Wall Street called Sharia Islamic Finance, also known as Islamic Banking. For example, in December 2008, AIG announced they are offering socially acceptable Sharia insurance in America. In February of 2009, Al-Qaeda created a video urging Germany to avoid a deeper recession and give up Western capitalism, convert to Sharia banking, and live by Islamic principles. So Wall Street and Al-Qaeda are both in favor of Sharia banking? Something is missing from this picture. What are Islamic principles? And what is Sharia? Sharia is not a religion. Sharia is a political movement whose members are dangerous radicals. Its mission is to force conversion of the entire world to Sharia-driven Islam, where church and state become one. Sharia is a political movement, much like communism and apartheid, with a few men in power making promises of a better life. This movement has been more loosely described as radical Islam or political Islam. Its mission is world domination. The method is jihad. Jihad comes in three forms, violent, cultural, and financial. Today, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Sudan, the Taliban, Al-Qaeda, and Hamas rule by Sharia Islamic law, which includes death to infidels who refuse to convert to Islam, execution of Muslims who refuse to live under Sharia law, women being considered the property of men, forced child marriage, and execution of homosexuals. Read the newspapers. The Islamic world is in a bloody battle today. Sharia extremists are killing secular Muslims. This is happening in Saudi Arabia, Egypt, Sudan, Pakistan, Indonesia, Jordan, Turkey, United Arab Emirates, Lebanon, Iraq, Iran, and Afghanistan. And this is not just a war on secular Muslims. Sharia extremists are killing innocent people, men, women and children, Muslim and non-Muslim, on nearly every continent. As of January 2009, Hamas rules the Gaza Strip by Sharia law, which will include the use of crucifixion. As of February 2009, the northwest frontier province of Pakistan is under Taliban control, which rules by Sharia law. Nearly every suicide bomber is a Sharia faithful Muslim carrying out a mission to conquer, convert, or kill. Funded by oil money, Sharia is creeping into Europe and America in many ways. Here are just a few examples. Today's British Muslims have the legal choice of taking their family or business conflict to a Sharia court instead of an English common law court. In six cases of domestic violence on public record, Sharia judges convicted all six Muslim husbands of beating their wives and sentenced them to anger management classes with no further punishment. French police have given up control in 751 violent, closed Islamic neighborhoods. Police urge non-Muslims to enter only at their own risk. There have been reports of rape by girls entering in Western clothing. February 2009, Gert Wilders, creator of the movie Fitna, which describes Islamic extremism, faces criminal charges of hate speech in the Netherlands. Gert was denied entry into Great Britain to speak at the House of Lords for fear of Islamic riots. Let's go to America. The first Sharia court was legalized in Richardson, Texas in 2007. There is pressure to create more Sharia courts in New Jersey, Minnesota, and California. On New Year's Day, 2008, a Texas father murdered his two Muslim teenage daughters, Amina and Sarah Saeed, for wearing makeup and dating boys. And in February 2009, a Muslim man, highly respected in his community, decapitated his wife after she filed for divorce. These murders are known as honor killings and are justified under Sharia law as a means to restore the family honor. In Jordan, typical sentencing for an honor killing is three months jail time. In 2007, the Chicago Hamdard Center for Domestic Violence had to turn away 647 Muslim women and girls seeking shelter from abusive fathers and husbands. They came from as far away as Kentucky, Wisconsin, and Louisiana. Sharia law allows disobedient wives to be beaten. Books are being censored in America. Sharia law does not tolerate any criticism of Sharia by Muslims or non-Muslims. 
in July 2007, Alms for Jihad, a book describing how Islamic charity dollars support jihad, was recalled by Cambridge Press, who was accused of slander by a Saudi billionaire. In August 2008, The Jewel of Medina by Sherry Jones, a historical novel about the Prophet Muhammad's nine-year-old bride, was pulled off the presses by Random House after shouts of Islamophobia and threats of violence by American Muslims. In November 2008, the Holy Land Foundation in Texas, an Islamic charity, was shut down for funding terror. There are 27 charities just like this one that are considered sponsors of terror by the U.S. government. So, it makes sense that Al-Qaeda wants Sharia banking. But the question is, why are Citibank, HSBC, UBS, AIG, Dow Jones, MasterCard, and Visa promoting anything having to do with Sharia? And why is AIG talking about Sharia as socially acceptable? Is this securities and consumer fraud? If you're concerned about what you've just heard, take action. A good place to start is to join Act for America, a grassroots lobby with 55,000 members and 250 chapters created nationwide to focus Congress on the influence of radical Islam in America. As you read emails from Act for America, you will learn more about creeping Sharia in this country. You'll receive action alerts in which you can easily pick up the phone or send an email. Make your voice heard. It's really easy. There's power in numbers.